The International Paralympic Committee bans the entire Russian team, citing systematic doping. Turkey's president is holding a giant rally for supporters and opponents this hour, denouncing last month's failed coup. And in the race for the White House, Donald Trump is trying to reset after a tumultuous week. But some top Republicans are still having trouble backing the nominee. Hello, I'm Linda Kincaid. This is CNN Newsroom. Thanks for joining us. We begin in Rio, where the entire Russian Paralympic team has been banned from competing in next month's Paralympic Games. The International Paralympic Committee announced the decision a short time ago after a report found Russia had engaged in widespread state-sponsored doping. That same report blocked about a third of Russia's athletes from the Olympic Games that are underway right now. Russia will appeal that decision and they have 21 days to lodge that appeal. Well, let's get the latest now from Rio. Amanda Davis is covering all the action at the Olympics, but first, Nick Petermosh has more on that decision. Nick, certainly a significant move, and it was a unanimous decision by the entire committee. An incredibly stark sanction by the IPC here, absolutely no mistake about it. Using the word disgusting to describe what they say is the state-backed Russian doping program that's permeated their Paralympic team here, they say. Uh, going on to say how Russia had prioritised medals over morals uh, and refer to how the McLaren report, which is one of two that exposed a lot of this alleged doping, uh, was one of the darkest days in all of the history of sport. So, obviously what's happened at this IPC committee meeting is they unanimously said that the same kind of doping of which Russia's Olympiads are accused who are competing right now occurred throughout the Paralympic team and in the IPC's mind that means they simply cannot be part of the games that will start here on the 7th of September through to the 18th. Now the key question here is if the IPC feel this strongly what happened at the IOC whose head Thomas Bach we know said he wanted to avoid quote the death and destruction of banning the entire team as some US officials suggested should have been the case and instead opted for a quite convoluted system where each individual sports federation would rule on whether or not the Russian athletes were in fact clean. They wouldn't get a presumption of innocence, they'd have to prove themselves again. Well, that very convoluted system led to about uh, 271 out of the 287 Russian athletes who had to go through review being successful. It was overwhelmingly uh, in Russia's favour, frankly. They're now competing at the Games. 118 including a lot of their track and field stars banned but I think many have seen how this has turned out for Russia given the kind of accusations uh, that were in that McLaren report that they uh, received from the World Anti-Doping Agency too that have led to the ban of the para uh, Olympiads seen how have actually let the Olympiads here themselves continue during these games we're seeing right now Linda and so uh, and Nick Russia vowing to appeal the decision how many athletes will this affect well, it is the entire Paralympic team, and the report itself refers to about 44 separate athletes that they have specifically in mind in, in terms of the accusations. But you have to bear in mind, the nature of the claims against Russia is that it is state-run on industrial scale that practically very few people are able to compete in the Russian Olympic team and not somehow come into contact uh, with doping in sport. That's the state of the allegation, and that's what makes the decision by the IOC to not take a similarly stringent uh, move quite, I think, so surprising in the light of how strongly the IPC, the Paralympic Committee, felt about it. So, again, a spotlight shone on doping here in the Olympics. The Russians had perhaps hoped it might go away uh, if they could just get on with the games here. But this Paralympic decision thrusting the allegations against their doping program right back into the spotlight again, Linda. Absolutely. Certainly raising uh, many more questions. Nick Petermosh, thank you. Um, let's go to Amanda Davies on all the action today. Uh, and I understand the rowing events have been cancelled. Yeah, Lindsay, you might be able to tell from my hair, it's a very windy day here in Rio. We are, of course, uh, approaching winter. This the first Summer Olympics actually being held in winter in the country that it's uh, taking place. There had been so many complaints amongst the rowing competitors yesterday about the conditions on the Lagoa, which is uh, just a kilometre or so behind us here 
on Copacabana Beach, there had been a Serbian pair that actually capsized midway through their race, uh, and they were no mugs, the Serbian pair. They were bronze world uh, championship medalists. And today, the conditions have been uh, similar, if not worse. Uh, one of the rowers that I've been in touch with said, actually, that their session this morning, it was actually a training run, was the worst water that he and his crew have ever rowed on. And what he means by that is the conditions, because of the layout of the lake, the topography, there are mountains in some areas there's open water in others he said that as you go down the the course the two kilometer course the conditions really go through four seasons in a day which makes it very very difficult even for rowers at the top of their game so the rowing has been cancelled for today we're waiting for a readjusted schedule but the feeling is it's not going to get any better or easier for the organizers of the rowing events here because the weather continues to be unpredictable in forecast for the next couple of days. Yeah, it certainly looks pretty gloomy there. Uh, but looking at uh, some of the great moves so far with this Olympics, only a day and a half in, already a few records have been smashed. Yeah, absolutely. I was lucky enough to be at the Aquatic Center at the Olympic Park in Baja last night. We saw three world records broken. Uh, they'd promised to be uh, some decent performances in the pool, and we certainly didn't disappoint. Their Hungarian fans had their flags flying high after 27-year-old uh, Katinka Hossu. Uh, she's had nine world championship medals in her career, but had never before won an Olympic medal. She did it in style in the 400 meters uh, individual medley. She broke the world record by two whole seconds. That is literally smashing the world record as she took uh, Olympic gold. We then saw Britain's Adam Peaty uh, in the heat, actually, for the 100 metres breaststroke, smash his own world record. He didn't go quite so fast in the semi-final last night, but has the chance to go even better in his final this evening. There's also a lot of focus for later on today uh, on the American 19-year-old sensation that is Katie Ledecky. We did see her in the pool last night with her USA teammates in the 4x100 freestyle relay, but they were beaten uh, into uh, second place. It was the Australian foursome with the Campbell sisters. A lot has been talked about uh, them, that they are going to sh shine in the pool over the next few days, and they certainly did in the, in the relay last night, again helping Australia to break uh, another world record but high hopes for Katie Ledecky she's very very much the favorite heading into the 400 freestyle uh, later on this evening also a lot of attention going on with the women's gymnastics getting underway and we're waiting here for the the female uh, road race cyclists to come back uh, to see who will have taken gold in that one Excellent. So, yeah, certainly a lot of great action so far. I was certainly very impressed watching the Australian women uh, claim that record up against the Americans. Uh, good to have you with us, Amanda Davis. We'll talk to you very soon. Well, let's take a quick look at the medal count. Australia and Hungary are tied in the hunt for gold with two medals each. The US, China, South Korea and Russia are among those with one gold each. And overall, China has a total of six medals, the most by any country.